Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'll be teaching you all about how to take the perfect self-portrait. For me personally, there are so many times when I'm in the mood to shoot or create, but there's no one around to do it with. So today I'm gonna go over some of my favorite tips and techniques that I utilize when taking my own self-portraits. So let's get into it. Starting off, some things you'll need to capture the perfect self-portrait. Some kind of camera, like a point and shoot, DSLR, or even an iPhone could totally work. Quite literally anything that has a self-timer on it. But today I'll be using my Nikon Z7 and most likely switching my lenses throughout shooting. Next thing you'll need is a tripod or some kind of stand and where your camera is absolutely safe from any falls. I'm not telling you to avoid the stacked pillow technique, but I also am. <laughs> Don't do that, but we've all been there. Moving on, we wanna pick a solid location and also start visualizing a concept in our heads. If we want this self-portrait to be next level, we wanna prepare by treating this like we're shooting an actual model or a friend. For me, I'm gonna utilize parts of my room for this shoot because we have some nice natural light coming in through these windows. I'd also rather not be outside where people can see me taking pictures of myself, um, but that's just me. And because we will be in the photo ourselves, we wanna also think about what we're going to wear. It sounds pretty simple, but having a nice outfit and frame can do a lot to complement your final image. So just think about the colors and the patterns involved in what you're gonna wear and just make sure it doesn't take away too much or distract from your final photo. So now that we have the gear we're using, a location, and an outfit in mind, let's get into more of the technical stuff. For the first image that I have in mind to capture, it actually doesn't call for a tripod. So for those of you who are about to stack your camera on some pillows, you're in luck. For this specific shot, we'll be shooting a mirror selfie, but a dope mirror selfie. So this semi full length mirror that I just recently purchased is meant for latching to the top of a door, but today we're gonna hook it up to the top of my blinds. Probably not the safest thing to do, but the natural light coming in through my windows was just too perfect. Next, you're gonna wanna think about your background and foreground objects that are appearing in your photo. For mine, I'll be bringing in this light up headboard into frame. I'll also be hanging up some additional string lights to add some more interest and warmth into my overall shot. I suggest taking advantage of things you have around your space and just kind of thinking outside the box of what will look good. Now I'll be attaching my 35mm f1.4 onto my Z7. With this glass being perfect for portraits, it'll give us a perfect end result with the low aperture kind of blurring out visual points that we're shooting directly through a mirror. And this just adds some overall mystery to our final photo. And because we don't need a self timer for this shot, we'll just be making sure our manual settings are in good shape. I believe my shutter was somewhere around 1 in 250th or 200th, uh, just because we weren't moving too much. Maintaining our ISO wasn't even a problem because of how much additional light we added into the frame. <laughs> For the next self-portrait I have in mind, I'll be accessing the self-timer function within my camera, so it'll be super helpful if you have that within yours as well. And because I'm envisioning this image to be a bit more colorful than our previous shot, I'm gonna opt for an outfit that'll complement that pretty well. Moving over to the corner of my room, now I'll be using some of that direct light coming through once again. And I'll be using this holographic poster board that I got at a local craft store, as I found that it creates a super bright rainbow reflection if pointed in direct light. Initially I was going to use it as a backdrop, but this way just seems a little bit more interesting. Next I'm just doing some simple prop styling to the portion of my room that'll be in frame. Filling up your space with plants or a simple backdrop is a perfect way to make your final image just that much more eye catching I'll also be incorporating this RGB LED video light uh, to cast some more light onto my face. For this shot being lower on the ground, we're not getting that complete natural light that we were in our previous shot. Now that we're about ready to shoot, let's access the self timer function. With my camera, I tend to set my timer to a 3 second interval that takes 9 photos per set. At least for me, there seems to be a ton of outtakes when I take self portraits, as there ends up being a lot of trial and error. So we want as many options as possible when we're shooting. As for focusing, this could get a little bit tricky. If your camera has some kind of face tracking, autofocus capabilities, you're in luck. But if you don't, what I like to do is pre-focus one of the objects you're using in your prop styling. For example, I was placing this fake plant into frame where I would be sitting, and after you've found your focus, you'll just want to switch to manual on your lens just to lock that in. Then you're just going to want to press the shutter, run into frame, find your good side, and pose. With this focusing technique, you'll be sure to get some out of focus frames, but it usually works itself out in the end. And here's the final photo. 
Self-portraits can definitely be challenging, but it's super rewarding once you capture that shot you love because you did it all yourself. Okay, but before we end off this video, I'm briefly interrupting from a later date to let you all know that my first ever online class with Skillshare is now live. I'm super excited to finally announce this, especially because I reveal elements of my photography process that I've never shared anywhere before. But my class will take you behind the scenes on two of my shoots that explore my technical and creative decisions behind taking my portraits. After that, we'll be heading into the studio for a first ever look on how I edit my photos and which programs I use to do so. So whether you're you're new to photography or a pro looking to grow your following, you'll totally take away something from this class that will improve your skills. And because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, you can sign up with the link in the description to get a two month free trial. With their site offering thousands of classes from photography to productivity to freelance and entrepreneurship, you'll be sure to find something that fuels your creativity at a super inexpensive cost. And after you finish watching my class, make sure to keep up with the other creatives on the platform. And with all of that, I hope you guys learned a thing or two from the tips and tricks I shared with you today. And if this inspired you to go out and take your own self-portraits or, you know, stay inside like I did, make sure to share them on Instagram and tag me so I can see. And lastly, if you enjoyed, make sure to throw this video a like. I really appreciate it, but I'll see you soon. Bye.